Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Rufaro. If you're new to the channel, I hope that you like what you see and you're here to stay. If you're a returning subscriber, shout out to you. Today's just going to be a very chill day for me. It's getting cold here in South Africa, so I'm just going to have my cup of rooibos and go through this video. My husband actually recommended this video for me and he was saying that, you know what, you need to watch this. It's about this American who was staying in Zimbabwe. I don't know if he was visiting or he was there for quite some time. I'm not quite sure. But he's just giving his point of view on life in Zimbabwe. And I'm very interested to see what he has to say. I only watched like two minutes of it. So trust me, the rest of this video is just going to be my true, my true reaction to everything. So if this sounds like something that you might be interested in, then definitely need to keep on watching. started about Zimbabwe and the people so I guess I have to pick my favorites Zimbabwean people are naturally just very friendly I don't know what it is that makes them so but they are polite and they're willing to take time out of their day to speak with you there's always exceptions there's always rude people and there's always people wherever you go in this world that will you know not be polite but as a whole like the country is, is friendly and they they smile more than uh i was used to it was it was uh fantastic to see if you ever go i think i really like this already already i'm feeling this vibe you know what um this is about when i definitely understand what he's talking about um people from my country can be very like we just love to to interact with different people, especially people from different countries. We get so excited because I guess sometimes a part of us feel like we are so like um forgotten or isolated from the rest of the world, you know, um for different reasons. I'm feeling the vibe. This is interesting. I wanna hear what he has to say. Go into a house, it's it's just culture that they, they offer you something to eat. When you talk about um women is about what you call the mamas if they are moms you know so like this mama here which writing home is, is always funny to say this my mother goes, what are you talking about <laughs> i'm your mother <laughs> well sorry mom this mama um they, they mama do adopt you basically they treat you like their sons and they'll call you their sons they'll say my son come here you know mm -hmm. and, and no. uh for me that's i love that it made me feel so welcome and love when you go to a funeral I, I, it's tradition, I guess, for everybody to, to come and, and there. Uh, the family provides food for everybody. I guess it would be normally like in the village, but here it would be like anybody in the neighborhood uh, would come in and, and we'd be fed. He's very right about this one because when, in our culture really, um, when someone passes on, it, it, it it's um it's not just the family that, you know, that mourns for that person. It's like, Everyone that person ever really interacted with, everyone comes, if, if it's in the village, the, the entire village in the rural area, whoever is closest by, they come, people from travel from different parts of the um, of the country to come to attend this funeral. And that also happens even in the urban areas. So in terms of, yeah, like what he says about if they feed people like at the funerals, you feed everyone. Yeah, that's actually one of um it's actually a very big um thing in our culture that um you feed everyone, even if it's five thousand people that have come to, to you know to attend this funeral, definitely you, you end up feeding everyone and it's it's something that we do, you know. So yeah. The classic Zimbabwean dish, I would assume most people would agree, is sadza. <laughs> and chicken relish and vegetables so sadza is basically um the, the staple diet because mm -hmm. um they grow lots of, of corn there they call it maize you know, not that big of a stretch but then they uh they have gr uh, grinding mills where you take your dried maize grind it into flour and so then you have lots of what's called milli meal and you um okay. you take that you boil it he knows stir a it lot up, of days. Um, and it becomes basically a big paste. And some people like it really hard. Some people like it really soft. But um, regardless, when you eat it, you are putting your fingers into burning hot lava. <laughs> and so you got to be careful when you're when you're first starting. Every 
every green missionary burns his fingers, I think, at least a little bit. I actually like this. You know, at, um, every Zimbabwean loves their sansa, or most Zimbabweans anyway love their sansa. And for me, even though I've, I've, I've relocated to South Africa, I'm still very much happy that I'm, I've got access to, to Mili Mili. In South Africa, they call it pap, you know? So um, I, my family and I eat that like twice a week and my kids love it too. And for me, every time I eat my pap or my salsa, I'm, I feel really filled up, you know, in my belly. And when you have like um, a braai, a braai is more like barbecue, I guess, for people in Western countries. But when you have a braai or a gochi gochi, then or a chisanyama kind of vibe, you need your papa on the side to really go with the meat and yeah and i love that but here in south africa you actually don't find um kale was the relish that he's talking about the green vegetables it's not your carrots or your peas and stuff like that it's like kale or spinach or cabbage so you can either have those on the sides of your salsa your chicken and um, chicken with gravy whatever it is and then you've got your, your cabbage your kale or your spinach here in South Africa, kale is actually very difficult to find. I, I'm, I'm yet to really find it like very accessible in very, very in like different areas. But um, spinach is easier to find, and of course, cabbage, cabbage is everywhere. So that's what we we also eat here. Yes, they do not know. So um, basically, you take that, and it's basically the uh, I'm saying basically a lot. You're taking something the consistency <laughs> yes, of play doh. And uh, you take it and you you can make it into a, either a ball or into a little scoop. <laughs> and then you scoop up um, some gravy, which has pieces of meat or vegetables. And, and you take that and you eat that. And it's absolutely delicious. The first time you Yay! have it, it's the strangest experience. You love but it. But eventually you grow to love it. And then they have uh, some sort of meat and almost always chicken. And they know how to fry chicken there. It's not <laughs> Kentucky chicken. It's not southern fried chicken, it's but it's a kind of really fry. Tasty, um, <laughs> the way that they do it. Sometimes people will, will like capenta, and capenta is these little tiny dried fish that uh, I never really enjoyed. No, I ate it, and I always do I. was very grateful when, when someone offered it to me. And I don't know, but I guess you compare that to the chicken, and, and I, I definitely had my preference. Um, I think the hardest part about capenta <laughs> was knowing that they had eyes that are looking at me. Yes. But, I remember when I was growing up, you know, um, and my and my mom always used to love to, to serve us salsa and, and carpenter. For me, I always used to feel like the little eyes were just used to get like stuck down my throat and it, I used to struggle to eat carpenter. Definitely for, for kids especially, they have a hard time eating that because they are really hard and um, they've been dried in the sun with some salt. So they've got that crispiness and then they've got that sort of like hard texture and then the little eyes the little eyes the little fish eyes i always feel like you know they, they're getting stuck here down my throat somewhere <laughs> like they're scratching my throat um the most extreme ones one was maklimbi or madora which is the caterpillars <laughs> so these caterpillars grow by the thousands on some of these i trees. love them my husband and, can't uh, stand they them. call them mupani worms as well and they'll, they'll fry those up and you'll eat those just like you would with the chicken and I remember the first time I had those, I pick one up out of the bowl and I'm looking at it. <laughs> I'm just going, you are ugly. <laughs> I'm going to eat you, but well, it's like you pop it in. And, you know, once you try and forget what it is that's in your mouth, it's delicious. Yeah, it's just yeah. the face is what got me. And uh, there's something called Ishwa, which is these flying termites that uh, <laughs> during a certain time of the year, kids will, will stand around these little termite holes. And, uh, and you know a lot. And so if you cover it, they think it's it's nighttime because the daylight's no longer shining down. Mm -hmm. And so then they'll start crawling out by the hundreds. And the flying ones are the ones you want to eat. The ones that are on the ground have angry little pincers that they hurt. <laughs> and I didn't know that. And I was trying to pick them up, and the kids are like, no, 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 Marugu, no. And you know, I got I got pricked pretty good. Those things do not let go. And so they'll they'll grab the termites out of the air. Sometimes they'll pull off the wings and they'll stick them in a bag and they'll fry those up and eat those. Or you can just eat it right out of the air if you want, which I, I love did those. because the They're kids like do nice. it. I love those. So I was like, okay. Um, so that was good. Zimbabweans like to eat parts of the chicken that we're not used to, like chicken feet and, oh. and chicken neck. 
while it does take some getting used to it. We're actually having chicken feet tonight. Um, and it's my second time having those here in South Africa. I've, I've been very picky about it because I always, you know, used to love it when my mom used to make it for me and I haven't really sort of gotten used to preparing them myself. I just like my mother's recipe and I just feel like my mom does it better. But I prepared them for the first time about two weeks ago and having them again today with, I don't know if it's okay, maybe rice. I don't know. But I love those. They're, they're, they're very nice. Chicken feet, guys. Delicious. It's very edible and it's very tasty. Once you've gotten over your preconceived notions of, of saying feet, you know, <laughs> but they're pretty good. The biscuits there, the, the cookies, they call biscuits, are... Uh, you can buy really nice ones and then you can buy the really bulk bags that are basically like, you know, just flavor on flour and um, I, I used to call them the all the time because they, it was something I would just sit there and study with the food that man, now I'm really hungry. I miss <laughs> that food really badly. One of the drinks there is called Mazoe and it's oh. fantastic because it, it's basically just syrup that you're supposed to dilute. Occasionally you'll start craving that stuff once again. So it's good. Mix your masoe with vodka. You'll thank me later. Put some vodka, um, some ice, and then put your masoe there. Or you put um is it is it swips um sprite? No, I don't know what I'm talking about. But definitely the vodka and the masoe and some ice. Delicious recipe. You'll love that one. Water and electricity come and go. Uh, most of us would store bottles of, you know, of of water all around the house so that um, if it, if water goes for a few days, then we'd still be able to drink. We'd probably do really <laughs> poor excuses of bucket baths. Oh, the bucket baths can be the best. The bucket you, uh, baths. If, if you have water but you Definitely. don't have electricity, you take the you know the the cold water and you put it in a, in a you boil some of it on the, the gas stoves that we had. And then you, you pour it in with some cold water, so you make it nice and uh, a good temperature for you. And then you just go into the, the shower, you get a cup, and you just splash it on yourself, rinse it out. You know, it's it's actually not nearly as bad as I was thinking it was. You're not Zimbabwean if you have an added bucket, but like it's it's standard ac across most homes, whether in the rural area or in the urban area, because like what you said, water and electricity really do go um, quite often and in some areas it may only come back once a week so definitely you know using the bucket to take a bath um, is something that is very really standard and I know I used to hate it a lot particularly in winter my god winter is hard you know when you have to scoop the water and put it all over you and splash it all over you and, and it's freezing cold and even in high school definitely we used to use the bucket a lot because um, there wasn't always enough hot water to go around. So I had to wake up very early in the morning. I used to go to, I was at, I was at boarding school at a, at a high school in Rusape. So we would actually wake up very early in the morning around 2 a.m. or 1 a.m. And we would put hot water in the bucket, close it with the lid or with your very long um, drying towel. And to make sure that it stays a bit warm and then wake up maybe, maybe an hour later and then bath or if possible just have that bath at that, at that particular time because hot water was a luxury for us so we also used to do that even even in boarding school and i did that for like six years i was at a catholic school for like six years and we used to use buckets quite a lot it's gonna be i, I thought about that going i've been spoiled with my showers at home like, <laughs> like my nice big water heater, and then transportation like into your area or into town they have these things called combis. And combis. It's basically like, I think combis. of the equivalent of a VW bus. You know, like you'll have the hippies used to have here in like the 60s and whatnot, or my dad used to have. And um, <laughs> you fit 25 to maybe 28 people, you cram them into <laughs> into one of those those uh, vans. <laughs> Zimbabweans would know this one. Got a <laughs> Karai Fofo, you actually sit um, at, for the, on a seat for three people. Um, yeah, the conductor will make sure that four people fit into that into that, um, into that that seat and you all squeeze in to make sure that 
they get as many customers as possible um, or onto that particular um, for that particular right, and then they get more money at the end of the day. There, it's interesting because you've got like four to a row that's maybe like that wide. Mm-hmm. So if you're if you're getting in there and then you see this large person come in, you go, oh, <laughs> it's going to get tight in here real quick. If you're claustrophobic, it takes a little while to get used to. And if uh, otherwise, it's a ton of fun. Yeah. And uh, the combi drivers will just drive around and they'll be yelling what their destination is. So they'll be like, county town, downtown. Mare, and, mare, uh, so you'll, mare. you'll wait and they'll come and they'll pick you up and you give them uh, the, the money for how much, uh, how far I guess you're going to go. And then you'll jump in there. It's really competitive. Uh, and then uh, you go in there, and there's just this hub of hundreds of these these uh, these bands, just <laughs> all yelling, saying, "This is it, you know, going to uh, Mtumbani, Mtumbani, and Soxile, Bulawayo." Mm-hmm. So um, that was it. Was really cool. Hard part about that is when you go shopping, and then you have to take all your food, and you basically like you can't buy too much at a time because you have to transport that back on the combi mm-hmm. where there's already no room. Mm-hmm. Uh, and take that all the way back to uh, your apartment. Then they use American dollars there now um, with inflation and everything that went. Uh, well, we had a hard time with currency for a while. So now they use American dollars and South African rand. Yeah. And basically, and this guy use, knows what he's um, talking about. Like... From Botswana or, or anything that you, they know what the exchange rate is, and you can use that for money. But because uh, bills are a lot easier to transport than, than coins, because those are really heavy, you don't really get change very often unless it's in South African rand. So a lot of the time you'll buy something and then you'll get lollipops or candy in, uh, in change. Just change. So you always have a few lollipops in your backpack. But if you're ever buying something on the market, you have to you have to barter down. Yeah. Because you have to realize they are working in a marketplace. They know they can try and get what they can. Uh, I bought something one time. My companion looked at me and he just goes, you paid about four times what you should have paid for that. <laughs> Bummer. You need to be sweet <laughs> so, That's how it goes. It is a uh, British, a former British colony. It's called Rhodesia. It's similar this to British cool, accents, right? but uh, it's definitely its own version because it's a combination of African accent mm-hmm. and, uh, and English. The accent for Shona is fantastic as well. They That's pretty much the main language of, of Zimbabwe. Uh, most mm-hmm. people are Shona with... Uh, one big city, Bulawayo, being in Debele, um, and they speak uh, they speak that, and, and so Shona is the main main language for most of the people. They they say how are you? So they say Makadi, and you yes, clap your hands like, in this way as a sign of respect. You get so, it. Makadi, yeah. which is how are you? And you say Tiribo, which is I'm I'm fine. Mm-hmm. I think I might be mixing languages. I think no, this is trust me, you got it right. Make fun of me. You got but, it right. Uh, people will say shop shop, which is sharp sharp, but because of, of the accent, it sounds like S H O P. It just means like cool cool. Um, yeah. uh, in Debele, the other language I remember a little bit better, just because I spent, uh, I was really passionate about learning that one because it was fun for me to, to speak. And so you say Salibonani, mm-hmm. which is you know uh, how are you, and you say Yebo. Yebo is yes. Uh, but you say yebo for a lot of different things. You say yes to like, you say hello, and you go yes. Mm-hmm. So, uh, salibonani, yebo, unjani baba. Mm-hmm. You go, ni api lo unjani baba. And you know, and you can uh, say, I'm, I'm fine, how are you? And, and occasionally, if you're, if you're that, uh, speaking to someone respectful, you change it up and you know, you say, uh, you say in a more, um, I guess, appropriate way. My tapasa in Shona, I think, is probably one of the coolest ways to say thank you. Uh, in, in Malawi, Chichewa, you say Zikomo, which I think is also really cool. The fun things about Ndebele is you can, you can, there's some words that click. I was asking them to teach me, and they say, okay, say, Kumukka to get to Kukkayatu. I go, what? And they say, Kumukka to get to Kukkayatu. Okay, how about Amam Kokoko? I'm like, no, 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 no. And so it, it, uh, uh, it's even a I'm lot of fun. It, right? it's, it's hard to, to get used to. You have to learn that. When it's written down, Q is and X is and yes. C is. Mm. And even within there, there's like different, different ways, ways of saying those. And uh, Another syllable is it's, it's HL, so it's Hlope. So you're like, I'm Hlope. And, and it sounds oh, like you yell out, spit, you know, out of your mouth. And oh, usually HL. they love it. They go, look at 
like this photo of Guti, you know, speaking uh, Shona. And people yeah, love it like when Iwa. you speak the language, so yeah? It was a lot of fun. I loved speaking those languages. Um, eventually, when you get so into it that your accent starts to disappear and you're speaking theirs, they, they love it even more. I loved uh, Shona and Debele, Shewa. Nah, they, were, they were fun to speak. Uh, uh. Okay, I think I'm going to cry. Um, it just made me miss home a lot. Yeah, it's nice to hear someone else's perspective on your country and something that's different from politics and inflation and all the other economic stuff that our people have had to go through and yeah i like this you know just to hear a very different perspective in terms of the culture and the lifestyle and the languages and the food yeah let me read some of the comments that i hear and just see what people are talking about here. Yeah. Some of the comments, I'm married to a Zimbabwean in the UK. She calls a woman, um, she calls all women sister, auntie or mom. I spent my life in confusion. Oh, I spent my life in confusion. <laughs> also, the phrase ah is different from ah. Yeah, it's more like ah, 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 more like shock. And it's not ah, like wonder sort of or or no it's not like that it's very very different this one says i'm not zimbabwean from the way but from the way he's describing the food i'm dara magana kira dude you're speaking in shona so definitely as zimbabwean i love this one um yeah um i miss home and this was very nice thank you i think i'll give my husband a kiss for this one for his you know for recommending me to watch this video and I just thought I would do this reaction video and I, I really enjoyed it. It just made me feel very homesick, super homesick. But yeah, I loved it. And yeah, definitely Iron Zimbabwean if you haven't had a bucket bug. <laughs> That's standard. <laughs> Goes without saying. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you want me to keep doing videos like this where I just react to certain things, let me know. If you don't comment, then I won't do it. No, I'm playing. I probably will because I like doing certain things. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much for watching. Have a good one. Thank you.